Hello again, everybody. Zack Attack is here with my WWE Raw review for this Labor Day Monday, September the 4th, 2017. Not only was this the Labor Day edition of Raw, it was also the last Raw without football. Next week, the NFL and more importantly, Monday Football returns. So, Raw needs a good Raw to get ready for that. And if this Raw. If next week's war and war that is any good as tonight's war, war may have no e may have no hard uh, task to beat NFL the ratings or at least keep ratings up against football. They need good wars like this. Uh, decent build for no mercy. Uh, some good action, including a great Intercontinental Championship match, which will leave still a question of what will the IC title match be at no mercy, plus a ruling steel cage. Main event. Before we get to that steel cage main event, I'd like to comment on some of the latest three happenings, the most talked about news within the last couple hours made today and over the weekend. First, JBL leaving SmackDown Live as commentator, uh, full time as an ambassador for a Bermuda charity. He lives in Bermuda. He says it a lot. And he doesn't, doesn't say it, doesn't say it. He lives there. So he's Stepping down full time, he'll still be at Mania, probably the big four, and other special events, a trip to the troops as well. Uh, replacing Mr. JBM will be Corey Graves. Yes, Corey will be pulling double duty, both Raw and SmackDown. It makes sense because he was doing 205 Live after SmackDown. Uh, I said was because now with this extra load. Corey Graves will no longer be doing 205 Live. Instead, Nigel McGuinness, NXT commentator, will be doing the 205 duties. So that's kind of cool. Hey, Corey passed his NXT wall to Mr. McGuinness. Now he's doing it yet again. Passing his 205 wall to Mr. McGuinness. To, go on, to join Vic George. Also made event as well before SmackDown. In the biggest point of discussion, uh, the news today that Raw will be live on both New Year's Day and, more importantly, Christmas Day. Usually these episodes are pretty shocked, specifically the Christmas one. But they'll both be live. A lot of people will be waiting for the WWE all day, questioning the decision to not give the wrestlers the day off for Christmas. Hey, other leagues do it. NBA players and NFL players play on Christmas. It doesn't mean to be no different than all those companies. Letting their workers not get off. But it's kind of sad. But news came out that it's not WWE's call. USA apparently made the decision to go live on those two days. According to Jeff Hardy's wife on Twitter. So, now WWE will not get berated. USA will. So, uh, there's my comments on that. Now, here's my thoughts on Wall. We begin with John Cena taking on Jason Jordan. Now, a lot of people like me thought the same damn thing when this match was first announced. Bring out the shovel! Another burial is about to take place. As Jason Jordan's push, if it wasn't already dead before, his push may be already dead already for good. Because he was taking on the man who was faster than a Rey Mysterio more powerful than a big show. Even a baby career is in a single bound. <laughs> Super Cena! Will we run me right? Both guys spoke some good points in the promo, scathing promo last week. It won't be a point about Cena burying young talent. Where he buried Corbin on the behalf of creative, probably. Because I'm hearing Corbin's in the doghouse for talking smack. Against WWE's policies or something. I don't know the whole story. I saw a headline. But despite my little regrets. And by everyone else's too. When this match was announced. Uh, Jordan did look pretty good against Cena. Hey. Make fun of Cena all we want. Like we always do. But Cena does give Young Town an opportunity. Sometimes he makes it look good. Let's them win over him. In this, or in this case. Let's the other guy look good. And then eventually lose. Despite Jordan's best effort. L. It ain't looking good when both guys get booed when they're doing like the boo, yay, punches. But, uh, okay, short from Jason here. 
you know, his IC title push might be dead, but at least he's sitting on big people. He took on Finn Balor a few weeks back. Now he takes on John Cena. Good little showing. Despite Cena overpowering him, maybe including a couple of times that found Uncle Shuffle, but he got it anyway. Joe came back, strapped him down, doing his big suplex moves and athletic moves. And I think they did this because Jordan's so called dad trying to sell this Kurt Angle thing called Cena's debut matches against Kurt Angle. So, like father, like son. But at least Kurt Angle beat John Cena once back in 03 when Cena was still here. But Cena would get the fall here despite Jordan's best efforts. The inevitable would happen. Final Uncle Shuffer, F U, 1, 2, 3 victory for John Cena. Cena wins again. LOL. But as Cena was celebrating, lifting up Jason Jordan in a shine of, sign of respect, a man he does not respect, Woman Reigns, came out. And then another scathing promo. Not as scathing as last week, because I think Dodie was like, I think you broke too much fourth wall. He went too trolly. So he had to tone it down. But both a little quips at each other. They didn't get physical tonight. I think it probably seems some more physicality for the walls before probably next two weeks. Especially the like, let's do some confrontation between Cena and Reigns when we're up against football. So that's why I think they're saving it for the next couple of walls before No Mercy so they can get a little edge on football with a Cena Reigns competition. So the exchanging jabs, like women saying, like, you're nothing but a liar, little punk bitch. And, you know, he's a fake ass liar. And he seems like, welcome Debbie down into the shell. And he's like, you say you're the big dog in this yellow yard? Yeah, why? And then she was like, you got any balls? But you can't find it. Like, your zipper's showing. And woman's like, yeah, I know. Big dog. A little burma then see the from the back. The, the, like little crips. And both guys are ready and ready to go for No Mercy and the cripping. Now, I heard that the reason why this match is taking place in No Mercy instead of like maybe pushing it later for like Survivor Series or something, like such so a big caliber match should be saved for a big caliber pay per view, not a B list or even a C list pay per view like No Mercy. But I mean, we've seen this shooting a new uh, Transformers movie and his producers. Think it's a liability for him to wrestle during the shooting, not risking injury. So that's why the match got pushed up to no mercy. And especially if Lesnar out for a while after no mercy, whether or not he's champ or not, they need a big caliber match for Survivor Series. Without Cena or Lesnar running Survivor Series, we'll see what way they turn to get a big match for a big full pay per view. So now, after that little confrontation, verbally, we went on to our next matchup, a tag team match. Keith Slater playing the role as himself, not as Elvis Presley. Elvis Wrestling like he was last week in Memphis. He met with his tag partner, I know, against the former world tag team champions, Cesaro and Sheamus, the ball, as the Hardys. Getting ready for the match, but they're... World former champion, they lost to Sheamus and Zala. And Sheamus and Zala lost to Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. They were doing commentary for this matchup. Uh, despite Wino, it, like, Slater got his butt kick early on from the ball, then Wino got a hot tag game. Big moves. Big, big kicks. Big close lines. But then he got distracted for a bit. Got ran into a poke from Sheamus after. Little confidence, which is all one, two, three victory for the ball. At least you see Slater and Rhino on TV, even though they're losing. But hey, maybe you're all thinking, like, why is he? Why were these guys playing the wall in the first place? Should have sent us back then. They're going to be jobbers. And I talked about Ambrose and Rollins, but instead, I should have been talking about them instead of the Hardys. I mentioned the Hardys a little bit before I mentioned Ambrose and Rollins. I was fans fixed because our next match would involve. Jeff Hardy going up against the Intercontinental Champion, The Miz. Very surprising that Jeff won this Battle Royal. I thought it would be Jason Jordan. Nice surprise that he won. 
Hey, we're all talking about broken Matt, and when is he going to be broken? He's unleashing the brokenness every day on WWE programming and also social media. Doing the you fade away and crush and fire yourself as absolutely, absolutely. Should have done it on TV. But hey, it's because of legal loopholes to still figure out. Fuck you, Anthem. Fuck that owl. But it's all broken, Matt. But Jeff Hardy is a big single star himself. He has accomplished more than Matt has in his singles one. Multi time IC champion, multi time hardcore champion, and a former world champion. Something Matt Hardy has not done in the WWE. He was ECW champion. That doesn't really count for anything. That doesn't count as a world championship. So Jeff is more of a singles guy. And we like to see him singles. And it's a great opportunity to see him singles after you know being along with Matt. At least we get to finally see why Jeff Hardy needs a singles one sometime. Maybe when Matt does become broken, they break up. This could be the case. And there's a fun IC title match. Uh, Jeff looked really good in there against the Randy IC champion. I'm happy Cena gave a little props in that promo with Reigns. He said he doesn't respect Reigns, but he respects the Miz, who he despises. Because Miz works day in and day out, and he proved it again tonight, despite Hardy's best efforts to approach him, Wilson, and all that. Miz will come back alive with his big moves, but mostly came back alive with the help from the Miz to watch, who was in the ringside area. Of course, Axel and Bo Dallas. Uh, Hardy was going for the top rope move, but Rep got distracted by Maurice, who was also there. And that's when the Miz Watch sprang into attack, knocking Jeff off. But then Matt Hardy came for the rescue, and all three guys were thrown out. It was interesting, all three guys were thrown out. You know, Bo, Axel, and Matt Hardy. Maurice was allowed to stay at ringside, which was interesting because of the way the match ended. She kind of... Explicitly or not, influenced the ending. So it was interesting to see her there at the end of the day. So as Jeff gave back of that distraction, with Miss capitalizing it on Jeff after that distraction from this Miss Watch, Miss tried for some big moves, even for the figure four at one point. But then Jeff came back alive, trying to do a twist of fame, but eventually did try a swan time bomb. And Marie's, like I said, got a little involved. Shook Mix's hand. Somehow that little movement from Maurice gave Miz enough time to roll out of the twist of uh, the Swanton Bomb attempt, which Jeff missed. He went for a twist of fate, but again counted into the score crushing finale in the 1 2 3 victory for the Miz retaining his IC championship. Now, I said in the last week of my review, either Miz wins dirty and causes Jeff a rematch. At no mercy, someone interferes, we get a triple flat match. We didn't see any interference, but Jeff may say a rematch because of the fact that Maurice, explicitly or not, got involved into letting Miz kind of know this one time was coming. So this could be a little seed for Jeff Hardy rematch, but till then we do not know who will Miz defend the IC title match against at no mercy. You know, we know he will. Angle said it last week. They will be the fan of the pay-per-view. But we don't know who against. Speaking of mercy, we also found out that we will get a rematch between the bar, Sheamus and Zoll, and Ambrose and Rollins. That rematch has been signed from No Mercy. Speaking of No Mercy, we're going to have ourselves a Cruiserweight title match in No Mercy. Before I tell you how we're going to settle Who's going to get that title match? We got a Cruiserweight Tag Match on Wall. As Enzo Amore teamed up with Grand Metal League and Cedric Alexander yet again against Drew Gulak, Tony Deese, and Noam Dahl in a rematch from 205 Live last week. You know, Enzo came out, flashy little promo, and then the match started. It was an okay little six-man tag man. Enzo's over his hack. It's kind of weird he's in a Cruiserweight division. He's the most developed character in the entire division. Gives him some prestige, but dang, they're trying to push Enzo. And I like him at all. I've been a big fan of his. He's not the best wrestler, but he's a good talker. Good and for bad, especially backstage. Anywho, should push better guys. Like, seven guys in the Metal League are underused in the company, especially on the Wall Cruiserweight division. They've been there for a year. The Cruiserweight's been treated like shit sometimes. 
Survive Live shop is decent, but they're not doing a job on Raw as well. You know, we did see the great double fine moves for both Madalik and Setting. It was almost like a carbon copy of the match on True Five Live. With kind of the same ending. Enzo cheated last week by grabbing the tights. He's supposed to be a good guy, but he won with the tights. Uh, he won with a little poke in the eye to Drew Gulak, leading up to the eat defeat to Gonzo, or whatever the heck the freaking move's being called. Pagonzo or Gonzo or some, some stupid name that Corey won't even say. One, two, three. The good guys win. Enzo wins the fall. Yet again, I think Southern or Manalik should have won the fall. But hey, they're pushing Enzo. And it might be giving him a Cruiserweight title match. He may earn it tomorrow night on 2 or 5 Live as he will face not just Alexander Manalik. Friends become foes. Also, Tony Nese and the, the Brian Kendrick. In a number one contenders fatal fireweight elimination match. I expect Gallagher may get involved unless the feud ended at that decent no holds barred match due to huge feet fight last week on Joe Five Live. So we'll see if that feud continues if Gallagher screws yeah, uh, uh, Kendrick over in the fatal fire right? So we shall see. And probably Enzo will win. Like I said, they're making an effort to push Enzo into the division. And we may see Enzo win that match and go on to No Mercy. Speaking of No Mercy, uh, might be a pay per view of rematches for the most part. For title matches, we have a title rematch involving the tag titles and all that. Before I get to another title match being determined for No Mercy, we have a singles match and No Mercy. Speaking of rematches, not just title rematches, some um, mostly rematches. Non-title, Bray Wyatt against Finn Balor has been made official for No Mercy. Stepping from Finn Balor being screwed over in the Battle Royal for the number one contendership for the IC title last week when, out of nowhere, Bray Wyatt showed up, transported himself in with his voodoo magic, and laid him out with Sister Abigail, causing him to be eliminated, or he tossed him out himself. So Balor came out tonight, challenging a behalf of his Balor Club, just me. Bray Wyatt to a match. Bray came on the screen, did a little, little creepy poem about about the bunny wedding. Little, another kooky little Wyatt promo. Probably said the same stuff he's been saying for months. Like, I like Bray, but his booking's been up and down. And the challenge has been accepted. Now, this is like the woman match. Bray won on wall. Against the non demon Balor, spewed blood against them, sending the demon to come out for SummerSlam. Will we see the demon on a seamless pay per view? I'll say this if Balor brings out the demon yet again, at least they didn't say it. I like what happened at SummerSlam. They didn't say, oh, the demon's fighting Bray. They didn't let us be surprised by it. They just said, Instantly, oh, Demon Battle is coming. The insane Demon Battle is fighting. Maybe they're all leaving that for surprise. Surprise reveal Sunday. Like they should have done for SummerSlam. If Finn does come out as a demon, he will win. If he comes out as regular Bauer, we could see a Bray Wyatt victory. We shall see. Now, No Mercy will feature a War Women's title match. It was signed at first a one on one rematch from Wall Speaking of Rubber matches. Alexa Bliss and Sasha Banks. Man, it's tough to take the women's title seriously when they're playing hot potato all the time. Hot potato, hot potato. First was Charlotte and Sasha playing hot potato. Now it's Alexa and Sasha's hot potato. Sasha wins her fourth women's title and once again fails to defend it against Bliss last Monday on Raw. And Nia Jax came out to attack Bliss after the match. Is she face or was Alexa face? Seeing that Bliss would face off against Sasha getting her contract and rematch. Nia was not happy. Went to Kurt Angle. Complained that, hey, I should be the one challenging Bliss because I laid her out last week. And Sasha too. And then Emma, who finally got a win... And a little give Emma a chance push against 
making changes last week. One scene two. So we had ourselves a tag match with locked in partners and rivals, Bliss and Sasha. We team up against Naya and Emma. And if big Naya and Emma would get the victory, they would add themselves in the women's title match of No Mercy, making it a fatal four way. Despite the differences, Bliss and Sasha did well pretty well this decent women's tag. Sasha came in big and early against Emma. She made flying knees, arm drags, and then she had a little scuffle with Nia Jax, even trying to bank them at one point. I don't think Alexa got in there with Nia at all that much. They did have one little competition. Like Alexa tried to win, they both screamed at each other, and Nia just took her down. That was a little funny segment there in that match. And then, as Nia was dominating on Alexa, Lex would tag back Sasha in. Sasha and Nia would brawl a little, including Sasha trying to put on the bank statement onto Nia. And then, without knowing it, Nia Jax would get blind tagged out by Emma. And Jax would lay out Banks. Banks was out. And Emma, blind tagged, was legal. Basically, let Nia do all the damage, picked up the pieces, and pinned Banks. One, two, three. We have ourselves a fatal full reign for the women's title at No Mercy. Hey, we had a man to have the... Universal title match be a fatal four way at SummerSlam. We have the women's title being a multi women match now. We haven't had one in a while. But at least they had a five way. <laughs> it's a four way. And I had an earthling that this was going to happen. We we're going to see a fatal four way. Hey, Nia needs to get in a match. You look really good against Bliss attacking her, even though face turn was kind of washed. Should have added more influence, make us cheer her more instead of just washing it. Although I did like the evolution turn on Randy homage that she did like the chair to Bliss like Batista did to Randy. But I knew we were going to get the, the heels winning. But I was like, who's going to eat the pin? It would have made kind of sense if Nia would have pinned Alexa. You know, a victory over the champion tag match. And to get her a fatal four way. And I was like, if they're going to have Nia pin Alexa, they're going to have Emma beat Sasha. Sasha ain't the pin. And that's what happened. Sasha ain't the pin. At least Emma won. So, yeah. Like, they're pushing Nia a little bit. But at least Emma got a little wubbing after being missed years. Where her injuries kind of didn't help, you know. Oh, ill-timed injuries. And hopefully she stays injury-free. Heading towards no mercy. Now, as I mentioned at No Mercy, I mean, I'm plugging it more than a network does. <laughs> uh, the tag team titles we have for grabs as Ambrose and Rollins will defend once again against the Bar. But tonight, after commentating the Bar's match, they had their own match against the club, Gals and Anderson. The Bar were at ringside, not commentating, but watching from, a, watching from close by. Closer than where Ambrose and Wells were watching. They were watching at the announcer's booth, not directly in ringside. So, a uh, good little tag match. Uh, great double teaming early from Wells and Ambrose. They found the juices back. You know, and Ambrose is kind of interesting again. Now that he and Wells are reunited, and it feels so good indeed. Mini Shield we you now for long. Without Wayne's, is not the full Shield. Maybe they add a new member. Because even if they put Wayne's in there, Will Wayne's get cheered like before? If he's in the shield? So. And despite the quick tags for Wells and Ambrose dominating early and even doing double suicide dives, the club would take advantage during the break and we would see the isolation game as one guy would be isolated by the club. Man, they've been misused. Man, miss years. Man, the clubs were misused. years. I feel bad for them. You know, they've been in the company for a year. And they should be like a major heel team. But they messed them up like they did with the Ascension on SmackDown. So, despite the club's best efforts to isolate Ambrose, 
even they were a little quick demon, double teaming stuff. Ambrose would get the tagging after the Lucha clothesline and it's ever through the deeds to Seth Rollins coming up with some big moves, including a blockbuster, and we saw another suicide dive from Ambrose. But then at one point, as well as just taking advantage of the sling blade, this is all in Sheamus trying to get involved in the matchup. After rounds and a nasty hook on off the top of the Anderson. That's when, like I said, Rollins was rolling with the big moves and the ball trying to interfere. But the interference backfired as Rollins would knock them both down. Benny Anderson in the victory for the tag team champs. So like I said, the interference from the ball backfired. And the club was not happy about the club getting unintentionally screwed by the ball. Champions is all. So they had a ball in the ring as the champs were watching. But the ball bro broke down the ball with a big bro kick from Cezanne and then a Sheamus and an uppercut from Cezanne. So, there you go. Message sent from both teams tonight. Both teams winning their respective matches. It's kind of weird that Sheamus and Zoll won their match clean because we had no interference attempts. But this match with the tag champs, we did see interference attempted from the bar, which, like I said, was thwarted by the tag champs. With the club, they retaliated. Club's supposed to be faces or something. Maybe they turn them face, they can finally start Balor Club. If they're not going to turn Balor heel, they should at least turn the club face and finally get Balor Club together. And get the club over again. Maybe. Now on to our main event. A steel cage match. Between the Big Show and Braun Strowman. If you would have told me months ago that we'd be excited over a Big Show main event on Raw. Especially against Strowman, we'd call you crazy. Yes, last war main event. We don't want to talk about it. Big Cass. The big show was that main event. Why were they a main event? Especially over a big, big match that should have been the main event, which was the triple threat. Roman, Strowman, and Joe. And Joe's injured. That's why we didn't see him last week against Cena. He's out for a bit. That sucks. Injury bug bit again. On some more Joe. So. So that was a shitty main event. It was because it was Big Cass. Getting thrusted into it. And now he's hurt too, as you know. Out for almost a year with the knee injury. But Big Show and Strowman main evented twice on Raw. And they've been decent matches. For being big guy matches, they made them somewhat exciting. Especially the last one. When the wig exploded when they did a double suplex. You know, superplex. This time, the wing was double imposed. So, if there was a superplex, the wing won't break again. So, the wing enforced, double enforced, we have the steel cage main event. Uh, I was nervous, but were they going to bring the same kind of energy in a steel cage match? And they did. Uh, for being a big guy match, especially a big guy match in a steel cage in a TV PG cage match, it was a decent one. You know, it was for a, guy, for a match that just involved two guys punching and kicking. They made it exciting yet again. Big Show, of course, cleanly shaven. Looked pretty good. Even doing an elbow off the top. That was awesome. They said he hadn't done that in 20 years. There was his finisher. When he was in WCW, according to Booker D. Who's back? Glad to see him back after helping out his family. Ride out the storm in Texas. Prayers to you continually. It prayers to Wick Flair. Glad to see his ass back up and running. And he's not dead yet, motherfuckers, as he said on this t shirt. Billy Graham, it was a message to his haters, not to his fans. But he wasn't calling his fans, motherfuckers. He was calling the haters who thought he was dead, MFers. So Billy Graham's got a big ego sometimes. Be outspoken. Anywho, despite Big Show looking good, it was about making. Braun Strowman looks strong heading towards his Universal title match against Big Brock Lesnar, the Beast Incarnate. And there were some good little spots besides the Big Show elbow. Uh, both times guys escaped, not just climbed the top rope, but also tried to climb out of the cage. 
couple of times, but he tried to go through the door. Stormer nailed the door against his face. And then Stormer got nailed against the door by Big Show as well when he tried to escape. And it was kind of back and forth. Both guys tried to go for the finishers. Big Show did try a joke slam. Both kicked out of it. Even tried a knockout punch a couple of times. But then Stormer would still kick out of it. A couple of near falls. A couple of exciting moments. Including, yes, they did do another superplex. Strowman did it. The wing didn't break because it wasn't for us. I think there was a groan from the fans. Decent crowd tonight in Iowa. Not Iowa, which is next door in Nebraska. Because I went to Iowa. Iowa in the break is next in Nebraska. Omaha. Omaha crowd kind of better than Memphis. Memphis crowd's great, and I've been to Memphis. I need to go to Nebraska. Went to, Om went to Iowa, but I need to go to Nebraska. Maybe. Maybe next summer. So after that big superplex, it rocked the big show enough to set up the power slam at last, connected by Strowman, and the one, two, three victory for Braun in a very grueling TV PG cage match. Braun Strowman gets the victory. And at this point, I was like, okay, if this is the main event, something big needs to happen here for this to qualify this as a good main event. Like mean, it was a good main event, but I was like. It needs to be a great main event because something big needs to happen. You know, if something big didn't happen during this match, why was this a main event? It was like, by this point, by the end of the match, it was like, we're not going to see a Leslie appearance. You know, he wasn't advertised. Maybe he could have put a surprise appearance. So I was like, okay, we're not going to see a Leslie appearance. And we didn't see the ring break. So if those two... Quotables are out of the picture. How can they end one on a good note and make this main event worth it? Break the cage. And that's what they did. And they saved the spot for after the match. So Big Show still out from the first power slam. Strowman was leaving. We went back in. Picked up Big Show yet again. And power slammed his ass. Through the side of the cage door and man the bump Big Show took was fucking brutal. Brutal bump he took. Taking the power slam through the side of the cage. Breaking it. Man he hit hard. He almost killed him. Stormin almost killed Big Show tonight. With that nasty power slam through the cage. Breaking that side. So... There you go. I called that. Sounds like we need something big to happen during this main event. If we're not going to get Lesnar, if we're not going to get a wall breaking, because that happened last time, break the cage. So, the trilogy match is ended. When Stormer gets the victory and breaking the cage by power slamming Big Show into a section of it. So, there you go. And that's how we end Wall with Braun Strowman standing tall. Sending a big message to not just Big Show and the roster, but more importantly, Brock Lesnar. Uh, we have no idea if Lesnar will be on Wall next week. It's kind of interesting. Strowman was not on Wall last week. Brock was. This week, Braun was on Wall. Brock wasn't. So we may see them on Wall maybe next week or week after that. Because I think the same thing when saving a Cena woman physical confrontation is like save it for episodes when we're up against football. That's why they're saving both not just a woman seen a physical face to face, but also a Braun Lesnar one on one confrontation. Because they want to save both those segments for when they have to beat Monday Night Football. <coughs> Probably say that next week or we kick after that. Because we have two weeks left until no mercy. Actually, three weeks. Less than three weeks. About 19 days as this video goes out. So, we have two more walls left before. So, probably one of those two. We're going to see these big matches. Participants collide physically. So, the world of no mercy continues. See what happens next week in California. In Anaheim. Because, of course, the pay-per-view is in L.A. So that is it.
for my wall review. Thank you so much for watching. With that in mind, you've been attacked by the review from Zach. See you later. Hope you had a happy and safe Labor Day. See you next time. Bye-bye.